Now I've got more data and I want to show you how everything just updates when I put the data in. But before we do that, because we're going to use this dynamically and use it more than once, I want to know how much data I have. So we're going to make the title tell us how much, how, how many students are represented with this data. Now here's how you do this. Let's get rid of the title that came with this. We want the title, we just don't want this in there. So let's see if we can get that to stay. It might go away. Yeah, that's okay. Um, we need to create the title over here in a cell and then we can make it automatically be the title of this chart. So we want to use a formula and say equals and then go over here to the results and click on the item. I get good grades in math and then we want to say and the ampersand above the 7 and we need a space so put a quote space and then we want to say n equals and then have it count for us how many items there were. There's a couple different ways we can do that. Uh, so let's say n space equals space quote and then we could use the sum of these because this would be the total or we could get them on the paste data here page. Let's just get them here. So we need an and, ampersand, sum of these and close it. Okay, then that puts in this cell, I get good grades in math, n equals 34. It counts how many students are represented with this data and to get that in the title click the chart go to chart design add chart title I want it above the chart and then we select this and up here in the formula bar put it equals and click over here in this cell and it will replace the title with what's here. And it, it ha you have to put the equals up here in the formula bar. You can't put it down here on the chart. And it has to refer to a cell. You can't write the formula up here. You can if it's not complicated, but this was even too complicated. So there we go. Now let's paste in my new data and see how this all updates. So here's my new data and I can just select it up in the top corner so I get it all. I took the names out but you don't have to do that when you're analyzing your own data. Copy, alt tab my way back to my other sheet and paste data here. So I'll click in that top corner and paste. And now the results, see how these numbers are much bigger. These are the new percents that represent the new numbers. And over here on this chart, n equals 1,926. You can then make charts for all of the other items that were on the survey. And at this point, it's, it's just a little tedious exercise. You can use the template that you made so that they come out all the same. It doesn't take very long and then every time you use this template, everything is just automatically done for you. Now I want to show you a couple other handy things that make the data easier to get information out of. If we go back here to paste the data here, and I'm going to make a pivot table. And now normally if the names were in here, I could click here and insert a pivot table, but it won't let you insert a pivot table when there's no data. So we're going to pivot from here. And pivot table sounds kind of fancy, but it's so handy and is easy to use. So we'll click here because we have data. Empty cells are bad, but I think we'll be okay. We are going to insert a pivot table and make sure it says on a new worksheet. You don't want your pivot table on this worksheet. And there's the range. It goes and finds 
where all your data is. And we say OK. So here you've got what you're going to work with for a pivot table. And here's what we can do. The filters are things that you can use subgroups. Let's put in, uh, let's see, grade level. I'm just going to do a couple examples. We're going to put in grade level and gender for subgroups. Uh, since race is not a single variable, I don't want to use it right now. If we wanted to use race, I would create a single variable out of these races. And then let's put, which one of these would be interesting to look at by grade level and gender? Um, oh, you know what? I want to look also by whether or not they get good grades in math. Okay, so what you put in the filter you'll be able to use these as subgroups. See how they went up here automatically? And they're pull-down menus where you can select multiple items or use them all. And what I want to look at is, let's see, um, how about I would like a career as a scientist or mathematician. So we put this as the row and see that automatically came up with these are the the answers and then we also put it in the values and this tells us how many people we're not filtering on anything so right now it's all grade levels all genders and everybody who answered the question I get good grades in math this is how they agreed or what they selected as an answer to I would like a career as a scientist, mathematician, or engineer. And see how they're not in the order we would like them to be in, but that's okay. What we're going to do is graph this. Just select it. Go to Insert, Recommended Chart. Go to your templates. These are other templates I've made. And we want, we're using Likert Chart 2. You can use any template you've already made. And this gives us the distribution. And notice how they are not in order, but that's okay for now. And let's take blank out. You just click that arrow and you can take the blanks out. Okay. And we're not going to worry right now about the, this is just for looking to see patterns. So the strongly agrees, this is everybody. But now let's just look at the people who are good at math. So we pull this down and say we want to select multiple items. If you click all, they all turn off. We just want the people who strongly agree that they're good at math. And let's see if we get more strongly agrees with that they want this career. Yes, we do. Let's see if we can put equals this. Let's see if it works. Oh, you have to put it up here. equals this. Okay, you've got to put the equals up in the formula bar to get it here. And now this isn't the prettiest thing because you've got the count of instead and we've got this order is not the order that we expect but this just lets you look at things. that So you know what you might want to graph somewhere else or you might want to look at closer. Uh, maybe you want to see, let's see what the people who say that they strongly disagree. They're not good at math. Oh, they do not. Well, that's good. They don't want to be a mathematician when they're not good at math. Some of them do, though. That's interesting that some of them do. Um, and you can, you can replicate this if you want to be able to keep your graph and look at a lot of different things. And see, we could make it the girls, certain grade levels, whatever we want to do. If we copy this and paste it, 
we get another pivot table. And here we could take this out, take this out. You put the same question in both uh, because one's going to give you the count. Uh, let's see. I usually communicate well. Let's see if the mathematicians think they communicate well. And we want a graph of this. And see now graphing is very easy because we've got our template. Insert template. You want one of my other templates? See this one I put shadows in. And I don't like the blank there, so let's take the blank out. And we want the title. Now we know we have to go up here, equals, click here. And you've got your graph. Now we might be able to force these into the right order. Well, we could. We could write formulas over here. But right now I just don't want to take the time. Um, but th this is just to show you how easily you can just look at the data. I usually communicate well. Let's see if the girls are different than the boys. So the pivot tables are handy for just exploring, but I wouldn't want to give this to the school people because a lot of them would not be comfortable using these pivot tables, but they're a good way for you to look at what would be interesting in how to graph the data.